And here's an early photograph of, again, a heel-shaped craft. This looks like it has some kind of glow to it. Um, your comments? Yeah, I think that they were experimenting around with different shapes. Uh, basically, I think it all has boiled down to what you call, what you might call the lenticular and the linear. Well, the lenticular type is, is a linear type and the circular type. Uh, basically, the ship that I saw at Los Alamos, I mean at, at uh, Hyde Park above Santa Fe, uh, it was a huge lenticle, you see. It was a huge lozenge shape. And you think about that, it was as big as a football field with the track around it. Five-story building, 50 feet thick. Uh, I'm, I'm going on proportion because I worked with proportion as a sculptor and a painter, so I can calculate proportional uh, shape and size and, and so forth pretty well. And this thing would be like a flying five-story building as big as that shape inside a football field and a track. Now, that, that's a huge ship. That is huge. And what are they going to do with this ship? Now, the big question of me is how are they hiding these things? Uh, yeah, where are they hiding these things? And they have, in, I have heard all kinds of scenarios from reliable people, uh, people who know about um, such landing schemes in places like Switzerland, where they have whole cliffs or whole mountainsides that slide out and the ship goes inside and then the ship close the whole mountain closes back up. You're saying people have, might have seen something like this? Yes, I know people that have seen stuff like this. And uh, I also know that there are people who have seen these things go into water. So what would be better than to have a lake Absolutely. just as a landing pad for this ship that goes underwater and then there's a dolly down there that pulls it sideways into a into a place up the hill that's out of the water or through an airlock. In fact, uh, there have been several uh, sightings in Puerto Rico, uh, in lagoons out there in Puerto Rico. And to make it even more convenient, these are held by the United States as uh, wetlands <laughs> so that there's no human uh, contact on these things. And these uh, Puerto Ricans, these poor people, are, are seeing these lights going into the water over there. So that, that seems to be another cozy aspect of, uh, you know, keeping this international biosphere uh, program going on is that you can do anything with the, the land uh, that you want, including landing football-sized uh, flying saucers under the water. Well, it, you know, all you need is, is uh, unlimited funds, and, uh, <laughs> and you've got it, you know. Yes, who do we know that has unlimited <laughs> funds? Hmm. Uh, Anything, you see, my theory is, this is the only thing that's theoretical, that I, I'm saying is, why have they kept it secret so long? And my theory is the big corporations don't want us to have this technology because when you start making a list of everything that this thing is going to obsolesce, it's a lot. It's a big Transportation, list. Transportation, uh, fuel, uh, all kinds of things. Aeronautical companies, airlines, Spare you name it. Spare parts. There's not a lot to wear out. Uh, and who runs but, the airlines? The and, CIA? Yeah. <laughs> you want to put and, them out of business? Uh, you know, when you start looking at that, it's my opinion that the only reason the military even is allowed to use this technology is so that they can uh, argue that it's a national security interest to be protected and use the government to yeah. protect the technology from us. In so, other words, to keep us from not... I'm talk, not talking about the Russians or Chinese. Their governments have this same technology. The only reason they keep it secret is to keep us, the citizens who pay for it, from finding out how uh, and using it. Right. Uh, and so they, here's the government telling these outrageous lies to every child in America, every adult in America, and every old person in America uh, about and, aliens. They've concocted this whole thing and, and the intelligence sure, network distributed right. through... through uh, Making the, sure that we're dumbed down enough to where a lot of people would actually buy that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised at this recent scandal that they dug up about the dumbness of the school books they're writing. Huh. You know, that's no surprise to me. No, of course not. And, uh, actually, that's been a, 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 an ever-present dream of uh, certain uh, groups... They've, in our society for uh, over 100 years. They've uh, been stealing and hiding technology for so long 
they don't want it to move any faster. They want it to move real slow. Sure. Uh, because they've got all the technology they want us to have, and uh, they want to keep it moving slow because they've got all that oil to sell us, and they're jacking up the prices whenever they think they can get away with it. Sure. And uh, and when and they know that every time they jack up the prices, though, it stimulates vapor carburetor research. And, <laughs> uh, so they can only jack the price up for a while, and then they have to drop it back down again to kill the research. You right. see. Then people forget and, about that. To give you an idea of uh, what we were capable of in 1947, uh, re referring once again back to uh, Kenneth Arnold's um, sighting, uh, on the way he made some rough calculations of the speed of the formation from the timing he had done near Mount Rainier. He came up with an answer of around 1,700 miles an hour in 1947. That now, could be the Horton jets, you see. Do you think that they would achieve that kind of speed? Yeah, I think they could have. You know, you never know how fast a plane goes. You can never rely on any published information about its speed. I mean, if you look at an old Jane's manual, you'll see that in many cases the, velo the, the top speed of the aircraft and all the other characteristics are classified, still classified at certain times. So they usually won't even tell you, and if they do tell you, you can't really know whether it's true or not. You know, it could be much faster. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, you never really know what the top speed of an aircraft is from, because usually they won't even publish it. They'll show the picture of it in the manual, but they won't tell you how fast or how fast its climb rate is or, and so forth. Its performance characteristics may be classified, but I believe they could have gotten, with some of those Horton planes, they could have gotten close to that. Uh, from what I saw, the pictures of these things, those are pretty advanced designs. Uh, what they do is they don't want this technology to go too fast. So they, they get a lead and they just want it to go at a certain speed as long as they're faster than the Russian planes or whatever. Right. And, as long as, uh, uh, yeah, just, just uh, to keep that edge. Um, Meanwhile, they're going 25,000 miles an hour, like the one I saw in 1953. And then they're talking, no they've got articles all out there in the papers that they're controlling, talking about how we might be on the verge of discovering <laughs> anti-gravity technology. Yeah, you our, know? I suppose our old friend Mirabo uh, yeah. figured that one out for us, too. I'd like to thank Mr. Lang for being our guest on the 33rd Parallel. I hope there are many who feel as I do that it's a good and healthy thing to entertain alternative views on items of such importance as our world history and scientific progress. This is, in fact, the primary objective of this video series. I hope you found it worthwhile, and remember, the truth can flow from lies, but lies cannot flow from the truth.